That's sort of like the Michael Jackson effect. That's what he did on his own vocal. Hey, what's up? My name is Alex, I'm a music producer, and today I'm gonna analyze Jorno's theme from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 5. To reply to the question of, is this track just a meme, or is it actually a musical masterpiece independently of the anime? So the track kind of starts like this, with this beautiful riff, playing in unison by guitar, bass, probably strings, that is so standard Jojo. Like every Jojo anime for the most part, the main theme, which is the one that kicks in when the heroes just do something unexpected and triumphant, obviously always starts with a guitar riff that tells you shit's about to hit the fan. I mean, Stardust Crusaders does this. Diamond is Unbreakable, my favorite part in Jojo. And even Stone Ocean has something like that going on. The big challenge here for Yugo Kanno was to write something that represents the epicness of Jojo, but at the same time, the eccentric nature of the location where we're in, in this anime, which is Italy, the birthplace of fashion. Which, yes, it's also my own home country, so Jojo Part 5 was very special for me. What, you don't believe me? Ragazzi, solamente perché ho una padronanza dell'inglese e ho una pelle leggermente più scura, ciò non significa che io non sia italiano. Je n'ai aucune raison de vous mentir, ok? Tashi wa hontoni... Mirano Karakimashita. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, but I swear to God, I am Italian. Anyway, let's get into the track and see what Yuko Kano did to marry these two sides of Jojo. Yeah! Da! Those vocals, this singer, this rapper, it's going insane. This part. That, that it, when I heard it the first time, I was like, what the f is going on? Like, now I can tell you, this rapping is sort of representing that the protagonists of Jojo Part 5 are gangsters, I suppose. What I love so much about this is that we cannot understand what the rapper is singing, but we can totally feel the vibe, especially when it goes like... <laughs> that, that's freaking amazing. It feels like Yugo Kanno and the vocalists are treating vocals more like percussion rather than a melodic instrument in this bit. To bring the flow, bring the groove to a higher level without any shame. And let's talk briefly about that transition. I love it so much because it occurs right after a storm of craziness and rhythm and what happens is that everything stops and the singer just breaks into that the first time i heard it i was like did he just say ciao ciao as in ciao in italian when you say cha ciao like that it sounds kind of smug it doesn't sound like salutation it sounds like bye you're fucked bye bye cha ciao, ciao that's that's what i felt like the first time I was like what did he just ciao ciao me you ciao ciao me but then after listening to it with more attention, I noticed he was just saying Jojo, but Jiao Jiao, a bit more crazy. And that feels like Chao Chao. And it's, I don't know, it's super cool. Man, I love this so much. Ah, so fucking groovy. <clears throat> yeah, this is super cool to represent that elegant side, fashionable side of Italy. 100%. This beautiful combination of big band saxophones just going crazy. You have one alto saxophone carrying the main melody like this. But then there's also one baritone saxophone playing a harmony under it. When you put them together, you get that. That has strong cowboy bebop vibes and also reminds me of uh, that Final Fantasy VII remake DLC where the soundtrack was basically super inspired by cowboy bebop. I love to hear big band jazz in soundtrack like that. It's always an amazing gift. When you listen to this track the first time, at this point, maybe you're already sold. But this part comes next. Ah, man. Yeah. That's the groove right there. It's freaking amazing. I mean, does it remind you of anything? Because to me, this sort of groove mixed with the saxophone and the synthesizer just makes one thing come to mind. The epic sax guy. <laughs> kind of fits. And now, the big part. so fucking amazing, I love it. I think this is, this is where you're like, 
whoa, this shit is real. Already before this bar, this track was solid, but when this kicks in, ha! the hype goes through the roof. If you're watching the show, I think this was probably the first time throughout JoJo's soundtracks where the name of the show is actually referenced in the music. And after that, it became a tradition. In fact, I think in JoJo's Stone Ocean, I heard Yuko Kano went something like... Stone Ocean. Stone Ocean. Stone Ocean. Okay, I mean, without the screamers. <laughs> I love music that is self-referential like that, that, is, that breaks the fourth wall in a way. It feels like those Spider-Man themes from the very old Spider-Man cartoon, or it makes me think of the soundtrack from The Incredibles where they mention the heroes' names in the music. Obviously, one might say that what makes this part special is the melody, which is super cool. Very interesting rhythms. Indeed. What I love so much about it personally are the vocals. Obviously, in the vocals, you may hear something like this. But what you have actually underneath all of that is a massive funk choir with many layers. So you have something like this, this, and when you put all that together, you get this. Sort of like the Michael Jackson effect. That's what he did on his own vocals to make them sound so freaking wide. Obviously, he did it much better than I did. And Yugo Kano also did it much better than I did. So what happens in the track is that the vocals kick in and then you have a string chord kicking in as a response. So in actuality, it goes something like this. Jo -jo. And the melody is just soaring on top of this dialogue between the choir and the strings, which is pretty cool. And now that you're conscious about what happens in this chorus, I guess you can enjoy it more. Mm. Mm. This also sounds kind of like Jemiro Kwai in a way, because one thing that Jemiro Kwai and Jojo Part 5 do a lot is use this sort of funky strings. That Bow sound is called a fall. It's something that is very occurring in funky and disco music. And in fact, if you put a funky string ensemble, even Game of Thrones would suddenly sound disco as hell. So yeah, Jojo is full of this stuff. Jamie Requires music is full of this stuff. Persona 5 music is full of that stuff. You can say there's a certain trifecta effect to those three. And then you have this part right here, which is a uh, we'll return to the theme from before. But ah, can you listen? Can you hear what's underneath? Can you hear the freaking metaphor? Basically what happened here is we returned to the verse one of the song with the crazy rapping, but Yugo Kano added one more element to make sure that this doesn't sound boring, to make sure that it has more tension than before, and to make sure to represent a reference to the title of the show. What we have is a string ensemble playing some chromatic runs that sound like this. Underneath the vocals and everything. And how does this make it feel? It's kind of crazy, right? That is emulating the sound, in my opinion, of a very windy day. When the wind is so strong that it's howling, it does the sort of thing. And that's what we have here in the strings. And I think this represents, you guessed it, Vento Aureo, the golden wind. That's what we feel in the strings in that bit. If you think I'm crazy, listen to this part again and tell me if you don't notice the strings. Yeah, they're there, they're there. It's gonna this composer is insane. Just like Yoko Kano, the composer for Cowboy Bebop. I think if your name starts with Y, has four letters, and your surname is Kano, you're, you're basically destined to be an incredible composer. Mm, man. Saxophone solo. Hey, that's amazing. Now this kind of feels like Mario Kart, in a way, in a beautiful way. And I love all the rhythm notes that the sax is playing. Screwing like crazy on top of all that stuff. Mm. That's ah man. I love it. 
Now, I'm not, I'm not a saxophonist, uh, I'm not a sax player, I'm not an expert in brass instrument, but you can tell how much vibe there is in this. Because of all those bam, dan, 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 rhythmic notes, but also in some parts, the saxophone is going a bit more distorted. It's like squealing or something. It's not easy to nail those notes as a first thing, and it's not easy to add so much character to them. So that to me blew my mind, and I was like, how they can continue this and make it sound as dope? Well, they did the guitar solo now. That's so amazing, like when you have this like battle of solos going from one instrument to the other. <clears throat> yeah, and again, can you hear all the detail in the way the guitarist is playing? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, this freaking harmonics. Ah, it sounds so freaking badass. And by the way, did you notice how much fun the bass player was having under this? Especially in that transition part, I think he's playing something like this. But he was slapping all over that part. Now I cannot slap that fast, so I'm gonna speed the video up to make you understand what it sounds like. It's mm, my favorite part. I love this part so much. Because like, like that choir is referencing another track in the soundtrack which i think is my favorite which is this i like this because it's such a unique harmony but also if you take that but put it in a more angelic context you get this That is ridiculous. So you have a track that sounds smug, it sounds gangsta, it sounds jazzy and funky, and underneath all of that, you have a degree of angelic, which is quite fitting because the antagonist in this series is called Diabolo, which is like the devil. So this represents that Jojo is more on the angelic side and the antagonist is more on the devilish side. But what's even more is that in this context, when you put it sped up like that, with this crazy bass and drums, it does sound disco as heck. And the saxophone going crazy in the bass lines, kinda makes you wanna get funky. <laughs> this is everybody's favorite part. I like it because it kinda deconstructs the track and takes it back step by step so you can appreciate everything that makes this so pretty special bit by bit I think there's nothing for it this is actually a freaking masterpiece and the way it ends is also very very classy the challenge of representing all the bizarre sides of this anime in this track were not easy. You have to do something eccentric, something classy, something epic, and something that surprises the fans who have been listening to JoJo music for four different seasons, four different parts before part five. Part four being probably the craziest in my opinion. This still manages to deliver. I don't think I heard something in part six that blew my mind as much as this, but I haven't finished watching it. So maybe as I go forward, there may be some themes from there that I might want to talk about. Let me know, guys, if you want to see more JoJo music analysis on this channel, especially if you're on Patreon. Let me know in the request thread over there, and uh, I'll see what I can do. But for now, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.